I got to change the motion to vacate. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's up to the conference. That's not my fault. What, 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 what changed your mind you in terms of running through the speaker? Because policy-wise, agenda-wise, the gin is what I spoke about on the floor monitor. Indeed, we need to pass the bills that need to be passed. We've done a lot of that. Nominations are now in order. The chair recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. McCarthy. Mr. Speaker, I rise to nominate Jim Jordan for the Speaker of the House. <laughs> Trust me, being Speaker is not an easy job, especially in this conference. But I've seen Jim spend his entire career fighting for freedom, no matter what, no matter the odds, and I know he is ready for the job. And so it is my honor to say, as a member of the Republican Conference, I am directed by the vote of that conference to present for the election to the office of Speaker of the House of Representatives the name of my friend, the Honorable Jim Jordan, a representative from the state of Ohio. I yield back. The chair now recognizes the gentlewoman from Massachusetts, Ms. Clark. Every day, the majority chooses to engage in a Republican civil war that is threatening their own members instead of engaging with us in the work of the American people is a day that weakens this institution and the standing of our country. We need a speaker who will govern through consensus, not conflict. We need a speaker worthy of wielding that gavel, a leader who will defend democracy, not degrade it. More than ever, we need proven, patriotic, people first leadership. And that is why I am proud to nominate Hakeem Jeffries as Speaker of the House. Jeffries. Jordan. Jordan. The tellers agree in their tally that the total number of votes cast is 429, of which the Honorable Jim Jordan of the State of Ohio has received 194. The Honorable Hakeem Jeffries of the State of New York has received 210. The Honorable Patrick McHenry of the State of North Carolina has received six. <laughs> All right, the House will come to order. The House will come to order. The Honorable Byron Donalds is, of the State of Florida has received two. The Honorable Tom Emmer of the State of Minnesota has received one. Lee Zeldin of the State of New York has received four. The Honorable Steve Scalise of the State of Louisiana has received eight. The Honorable Mike Garcia of the State of California has received one. The Honorable Kevin McCarthy of the State of California has received two. The Honorable Bruce Westerman of the State of Arkansas has received one. No person having received a majority, the whole number of votes cast by surname, a speaker has not been elected. Pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the chair declares the House in recess, subject to the call of the chair. House Democrats have repeatedly made clear we want to find a bipartisan path forward. Leader Jeffrey. At every step of the way, Republicans have rejected bipartisanship and embraced extremism. Jim Jordan is a clear and present danger to our democracy. He wants to end Social Security as we know it. He wants to end Medicare as we know it. Doesn't believe that President Biden 
was elected in 2020. That's disrespectful to the American people. Jim Jordan wants to impose a nationwide abortion ban, and he is the poster child for MAGA extremism. We are saying to our traditional Republican colleagues, good men and women on the other side of the aisle, in the attachment to the extremist Jim Jordan and join with Democrats in finding a bipartisan path forward. Well, there are still reasonable Republicans over on the other side of the aisle, as I've repeatedly said, good men and women who want the House reopened, who want the Congress to function. And what we've said is we just want a House that allows for bipartisan bills that benefit the American people, not Democrats or Republicans, the American people. We want a House that allows for bipartisan bills to receive up or down votes, that will receive the majority of members on both sides of the aisle but are being blocked right now by the extremists. We recognize that Jim Jordan is a clear and present danger to the American people. And we are going to be here for as long as it takes to end this national nightmare. I've said repeatedly that there are many Republicans on the other side of the aisle who we believe are good Americans, good patriots, good men and women. Patrick McHenry is one of them. There are others. Who created Jim Jordan? Who normalized Jim Jordan? Who was about to but nominate? Be a who was about who was about to nominate him, Jim Jordan? That's clear. And are you okay? No, let's be clear. Let's be clear. We have said repeatedly for the last two weeks that we are ready, willing, and able to find a bipartisan path forward to enter into a partnership with our Republican colleagues to reopen the House, to get the business of the American people done, to solve problems for hardworking American taxpayers. We just need some traditional Republicans to join us. Instead of rejecting bipartisanship, they need to stop embracing extremism. Are there concessions that you would what have they said to you if they're, if they're not voting for you? What, what have they been their concerns they've expressed? I don't, I don't get into private conversations with colleagues. Sir, are you concerned if you don't make it in the first one that you'll lose more votes in the second? Hey, back up, guys.